Hello everybody. Welcome again to our one question a day learning incrementally. The chapter we are discussing is enamel and the question that we are going to focus is on very important questions. Enumerate and discuss about the hypocalcified areas and enough enamel. Describe in detail the enamel lamellae and tufts. Give their clinical significance. This question may come in different forms, but the center core is hypocalcified areas of enamel and description of each of the structures with emphasis on clinical significance. So if this question is asked, you need to discuss on how there is a defective or decreased calcifications, how the structures like enamel, lamellae, tufts, spindles, DEJ are formed, each one of them, what, where, why, how, what, the role and its implications. So for enamel level, lamellae, you need to say where it is, what is it, why it is formed, how does it form, what does it cause, the role of stress, effect of lamellae on clinical uh, progression or the importance, the dentin on normal junction, whereas it's the shape, the number, the convexity facing, why corrugated, the structures associated with DEJ, what makes DEJ unique, the separation, the role of membrane preformative or the clinical correlations. Similarly, we have for enamel tufts and spindle, the clinical signification, all these with diagrams. Going into the answer. Okay, in areas in enamel which have improper or defective or reduced calcification as compared to the normal enamel counterpart, that is very important, as compared to the normal enamel counterpart is called as hypocalcified areas. Okay, they are improper or defective or reduced calcification as compared to the 96 percentage of inorganic calcification of enamel is called as hypocalcified areas. The hypocalcified structures are enamel lamellae, tuft, spindles, DEJ. These are the most common structures that are hypocalcified. The enamel lamellae are leaf like spindle shaped hypocalcified structures. They run from the surface to the dentino enamel junction and sometimes penetrate into the dentin. They are made up of organic matter and relatively less amount of inorganic matter as compared to the very strongly calcified uh, enamel. They develop in surface and expose or result of exposure to stresses. The cracks which are other deformities associated with enamel lay or both enamel lamellae and cracks are filled with organic material and inside before it unerupted to they may be uh, with enamel organ cells, hornified cuticles, connective tissue materials, whereas organic materials such as your food debris or pellicle may be seen in the erupted tooth. They may serve as a nidus for dental caries formations. They are of three types, A, B, C. A is poorly calcified enamel rods. B is degenerated cells. C is organic matter. And this is the most common. Enamel tufts, they are ribbon-like or tuft of grass-like structures. See, hypocalcified structures seen along the DEJ extending to various length of the enamel okay their organic content is mainly proteinous in nature they are a response to the curvature stresses you know that enamel rods dj is a uh, corrugated surface enamel spindles are hypo mineralized structures found along the usually along the cuspal regions and they are the process of autotoblast arising from the dentin and extending into various length into the enamel rods Okay. The dentino enamel junction is a scalloped structure with a concavity facing the enamel and convexity facing the dentin. They are formed prior to the development of tissues and more pronounced in the cuspal regions. Membrana preformative structure presents in the dental sacs that separates the dental sacs and dental papilla and that is what develops into the dentino enamel junction. It is corrugated for various reasons for mechanical interlocking. It increases the surface area so that the enamel and dentin are locked together and do not chip away. That is the single most important reason why dentino enamel junction is 
scallop mechanical interlocking increases the surface area so that enamel and dentin do not tear off from each other. The lines of enamel, you see a stray of red CS, uh, which represents the incremental rhythmic pattern of enamel growth or depositions. Because of the difference in the uh, amount of calcium that is available, there could be a hypocalcified or hypercalcified structures. They run from the DEJ, they start in the DEJ and proceed towards the enamel surface. On the cross sections, they appear as concentric circles and Otherwise, they are seen as rings. Neonatal rings are highlighted increment of line, lines of red CS between prenatal and postnatal enamel. So any drugs history will be reflected here. hunter Schreger bands or optical illusions arising due to the differences in the direction of enamel rods. Right? They are also seen from DEJ to enamel surface and seen as light and dark bands. Light is called as dia, dark is called as para. Light is dia, dark is para, no DD. Okay. And clinical significance, enamel lamina or sites of weakness and a portal of entry for microorganisms, hence making the tooth to be susceptible to the dental caries. DEJ has to, we have to make sure that we place the uh, base of our dental cavities preparations at the dentin, not in the enamel. The direction of enamel rods helps us to plan for the cavity base. Unsupported enamel rods need to be removal. Otherwise, they will cause secondary caries. Uh, hypocalcification of enamel may lead to a very yellowish tooth. And we have a phenomenon called as acid etching that when we use uh, mild acids to remove the enamel, phosphoric acids to remove the enamel so that we create a base for filling by mechanical micro tags. So acid etching, we use the phenomenon of acid removing the uh, highly calcified mineralized tissue of enamel so that there are small gaps available and we can fill our materials, particularly glasinomus simmons. And this is called as chemico-mechanical interlocking. And for this, the structure of enamel rods and the composition are very helpful. And traditional enamel, enamel leaf like structures, all this, again, we have to uh, go in depth. And with that, we come to the end of discussion on the uh, hypocalcified areas of enamels. Stay connected with us for another session of one question a day and we will come with a new questions. Till then, happy learning.